Okay, so welcome everybody um, online and here at GIX. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started and um, we have at least one other person who is participating online. So this is being recorded and we will be happy to send you the um, slide deck as well as a follow up, especially if we have your email um, from your sign in sheet. So we have a small group here, which is wonderful because I think we can be a little more informal and have a little bit more um, direct dialogue and Q&A. Um, usually the way we run these sessions is that I'll spend about 20 to 30 minutes um, giving you some background and some information about GIX and our degree programs and some details about applying. Um, and then um, we will spend some time taking your questions. We'll have, we have a couple of current students here who can speak about their experience so far in the program. Um, and then we we just have any follow up uh, questions that we might need to chase down for you, but that's about it. Since we have um, a small group, I just want to make sure that Chance, who's online, is able to hear us. My what button? Hmm. Uh, Nope, it shouldn't be. It should be okay. Is she able to hear? So Chance, what I would say is I'm sorry if you're having trouble hearing us. Um, if uh, fiddle with your uh, settings on your computer, if you can't hear us, we'll have a recording we can send you. Um, okay, so we will dive in. Um, before I get started, actually we have almost as many GIX people here as we do visitors. So. I'm going to do just a very quick informal round of introductions so you can see who's who and when at the end we can break up and be more informal for Q&A. So I'll start over here um, with my colleague Blake Hannaford. And Blake um, is a well-known, long-standing, impressive professor in computer or electrical engineering at UW and has joined GIX um, in a focused role. So he'll be heavily involved in in particular in the um, technology development courses and projects that we do here at GIX. Um, Dr. Yu um, is a, a visiting uh, faculty member from Tsinghua University and he's been heavily involved in um, advising and mentoring students on their thesis projects, which I will talk about later. So we have Liao in the back of the room, has joined us as a recruiting specialist. Matt, who um, also is just recently graduated from Xinhua and has come on board in our staff here who are working for Xinhua but stationed here in um, Bellevue. We then have Leah. Um, she is uh, a program manager for all academic services and student services, so she is the person to talk to with any questions about that. And then we have two current students. We have Amit and Annie. And uh, when we get towards the end of the presentation, we'll invite them to come up and talk about their experience. And then you're welcome to ask questions of any of us in the room. So, okay, we'll get started. Um, but before I jump in, since there's only a few visitors, are there particular questions or topics that you want me to cover when I go through this presentation? Anything in particular that you really wanna know about? Just the general overview, oh yeah. Okay, so sort of the vision and then the five to 10 year outlook for graduates of these programs. Great. Any others? Yes. Okay, so better understanding of how does the interdisciplinary curriculum work? How is it set up? Okay, great. Any others? Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. Yes, you want to know about your investment, right? <laughs> Great. Okay. I will make. Great. 
projects. Great. So we can definitely do that. And also, I think for Amit and Annie, when you give your um, part of the presentation, you can talk about your launch projects in particular. That would be great. Okay. So good news. Pretty much all of what you brought up is contained in our presentation already. Talk a little bit about the Global Innovation Exchange and what that is. Some highlights about Tsinghua University and University of Washington. Um, we'll go a little more in depth in the graduate degree programs that GIX offers. Um, talk a little bit about what we envision as expected career outcomes and paths that our graduates might take. We will touch on admissions requirements and what we look for and who might be a good fit for these type of programs. And then we'll hand over to Amit and Annie to give you their point of view. And then we'll take your questions. Okay, um, so starting out, um, you've probably heard the terms dual degree and MSTI and GIX and Global Innovation Exchange, and it can be a little bit confusing. So what are these different organizations in terms? Well, the Global Innovation Exchange describes a new partnership between University of Washington and Tsinghua University with founding support from an industry sponsor, Microsoft. Um, so the, vi the vision of GIX is to bring together top faculty and learners from across different disciplines and countries to help inform and develop leaders in innovation. So people who are poised to go out in both industry and nonprofits and even potentially academia and develop a point of view, a practice, an ability to bring innovation to pressing global challenges. Um, some unique things about the program here, it is a cohort model, which means that we recruit a cohort of students as a group and they go through a sequence of classes together as a group. They're studying together regularly. And what we find with this kind of model is students learn as much from each other as they do from the formal part of the program, right? So um, these guys are probably learning a lot from their peers that we're wor they're working with on projects every day, people coming together from different countries, different cultures, different backgrounds. Um, in addition, we integrate industry mentors and sponsored project challenges. So we have, we have two things that we do. We um, have developed a mentorship program where we have a database and network of mentors who sign up voluntary on a voluntary basis to spend time helping students with whatever topics they're most interested in that the mentor might have expertise in, whether it is a particular technology skill or domain like conversational UI or machine learning, or whether it's just about how do I write my resume? How do I get a job? Those mentors are there and available to connect with each student on an individual basis to help them with things that are gonna enhance their education while they're here. The sponsored project challenges um, are the launch projects where a sponsor company, and I'll talk about who those companies are, will come and bring a particular business or technology challenge that they're wrestling with that they would like to have a talented interdisciplinary student group work on over the course of five to six months and complete that project um, to demonstrate something new that can be done in that space. So the longer term vision is actually to grow and scale the, the breadth and the impact of GIX um, through collaboration with a global academic network of leading universities and an increasing consortium of cross-sector industry and nonprofit partners and sponsors who will contribute to this vision and the curriculum and the projects here. Too many computers. Um, so just really quickly, I'm not going to go into these uh, these details, but if you look up, if you look into the reputation of Tsinghua University and University of Washington, what you will find is that they are both consistently top ranked universities in their countries and globally, in particular in specific relevant topics, engineering, innovation, social impact. Um, and they both have an incredible network of notable alumni. So one of the things that people who um, go to a graduate program find that one of the most powerful things that they get from that experience is not just the actual learning and education and skills that they walk away with, but they join a network of colleagues that are um, a wealth of opportunities moving forward in terms of how they find new jobs, how they make professional connections, 
et cetera, et cetera. And so that's why it's really important. GIX is relatively new. Our graduate degree, degree programs are relatively new, but we really stand on the, the reputation of these two universities. So we've already started to develop our academic network. You may recognize some of the names up here. Um, we've initiated a few different projects with um, these universities. So we did a summer program this year where we invited undergraduates from these universities to come and do a two week intensive boot camp here this summer. We have faculty visiting and we, we, our goal is to have faculty visit from these institutions and come as visiting faculty and help deliver the curriculum and work on projects with students. Uh, so stay tuned, there will be other projects and activities that we do with this group. And then um, these are the initial consortium members. These are um, industry folks who have worked with us and have been actively coming and doing workshops. Some have sponsored projects. We'll give some examples. Um, AT&T really wants to look at how do we get people to come in and have an engaging experience in the retail environment in terms of um, products and services. Um, Baidu, the Baidu team is looking at adversarial attacks and how we understand that to inform how we're developing autonomous vehicle algorithms. Very interesting. Um, the Boeing team is really looking at the travel experience for the non-experienced traveler. So for they had a statistic that was pretty amazing in that um, sort of 90% of the world has never actually traveled on an airplane. So when you think about the market opportunity for how do we make travel experiences, accessible to people for whom they've never gotten on an airplane. That was a topic or a problem space that was presented to that team. Um, and T-Mobile um, is really looking at how do we create an experience for our consumers that really makes the, the difference in service for a 5G network tangible. So you have an experience in a mobile environment where you can see this experience would not be possible without the 5G network. And so they're their task is without actually having a 5G network, how do they develop that experience? So it's a huge range of projects of what students are working on and what they're challenged with. So looking at sort of what are the outcomes, you asked, you know, what's the financial support, but also kind of what do I get out of this program? If I invest my time and energy and money, money what can I expect? Um, again, you can expect to be here with students from a range of different backgrounds and countries. They're all motivated around this um, global vision. Um, you are gonna be uh, Im embedded in a uh, environment here in Seattle, which is a very rich um, network of technology industry companies who are all either based here or have offices here. Microsoft, Facebook, Google, Adobe, um, T-Mobile, who, who am I missing? There's a huge range of Amazon, that one was, should have been obvious. But, but it's a really rich network. And what that means is, be, aside from the activities and the learning opportunities that are happening here in this building or on UW campus, there's a constant stream of other networking opportunities and learning opportunities. There are meetups, there are hackathons, there are organizations. Sometimes we host those events here and we bring, out, bring in outside parties. So I would say that one of the things students experience is it's almost there are too many things for them to choose from and not enough time rather than not not having the opportunity to get exposed to these networking opportunities and activities. So in the dual degree, which I'll cover in a minute, you do get um, the opportunity to gain hands-on experience in two of the world's most um, important economies, in particular um, technology and product development uh, regions, um, the manufacturing region in China. And so students who are in the dual degree have had the opportunity to take field trips, to do internships at Microsoft Research Asia, to visit uh, manufacturing companies, and to really be able to see the end-to-end -end process of how products are made. Um, so, I'll, so there are two degree programs that we will talk about. One is the Master of Science in Technology Innovation. That is a five quarter um, master's degree offered by UW. And then there is the dual degree, which includes the MSTI, but also is completing six months of study in Beijing, China at Tsinghua University. So I'll talk about each of those 
options. Um, the MSDI is offered by UW, and uh, you asked a little bit about what, why is it interdisciplinary? What does that mean? How does that work? So universities are typically organized by departments or colleges that are a particular domain of study. Uh, computer science or uh, mechanical engineering or business, right? Those are organized by schools. And so when you launch an interdisciplinary degree and you really want to draw from many different groups, essentially we are borrowing faculty from all of those groups. So those groups are our sponsoring departments and they lend expertise in developing our curriculum, what our learning goals should be. Um, we borrow faculty from those departments, so leading faculty from those departments come and teach here. Um, and so for us, uh, the five departments that we work with are computer science and engineering, electrical engineering, human-centered design and engineering, the Foster School of Business, and the School of Law. So we are drawing faculty from each of those groups, and we had an interdisciplinary faculty group, meaning represent representatives from each of these departments that contributed to defining our curriculum and deciding what needs to be taught and how do these subjects and these projects fit together. So we are supported by the College of Engineering. Um, more broadly, I don't think we've had mechanical engineering faculty teach yet, but certainly that is an opportunity. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. And we do have a lot of, um, of our cohort who have a mechanical engineering background. In fact, one of our current students actually was teaching mechanical engineering in Ethiopia before joining our cohort. Thank you for the question. So um, there's a couple of frameworks that explain how the MSTI degree works. So one is that the three kind of disciplinary directions that we draw from in our curriculum are design thinking and user-centered design, entrepreneurship and business, and then technology development and, and hardware and software technology development. Um, within that, um, I'm actually going to jump around a little bit. So the second framework to think about is prepare, practice, launch. So another structure to our coursework is you prepare, you, you learn fundamental knowledge in these areas, or you add fundamental knowledge. You practice, you apply that knowledge on a course-by-course -course basis to a focused project in that particular subject. And then launch. Launch is really the synthesis of what you've learned. It is a much more in-depth and comprehensive project. Uh, in partnership with a sponsoring industry member um, that really is meant for you to apply much of what you've learned in the rest of the curriculum to a, to a more comprehensive problem space. So then if I go back, so within the curriculum, both on a course level and then on, on a major project level, you have the opportunity to practice solving these meaningful problems and make an impact. You can take risks. So you know, we have, for example, hardware software lab where students start out at the beginning of that quarter and they articulate a goal for a prototype that they have to build over the course of that quarter and demonstrate that it works. But along the way, and I'm sure you both felt this, you make small mistakes or failures to, to, that you learn from and then you iterate and then you improve or change what it is you're trying to develop or prototype. So this is a safe environment to really experiment, to build prototypes, to evaluate them, get feedback, and then improve them and make them better. Um, so the curriculum consists of a, of a sequential set of courses. What that means is we have a set of courses that move in a particular order because they build on each other. Um, they involve both lecture courses and then studio and lab courses. The studio and lab courses tend to be much more hands-on and the lecture courses are, are more giving you kind of fundamental knowledge and doing sort of case studies or that type of work or reading and discussion. Um, we do have a, a much more in-depth overview of the curriculum on our website that you can check out. Um, but I can walk through just really quickly. You can get a sense of what's going on. So the different colors that you see are the design, the technology, and the entrepreneurship. So here, everything in pink is related to design thinking or user-centered design. Everything in blue is related to business or entrepreneurship. And everything in the green is, is um, 
hardware, software, technology development. So you can start to see how these courses evolve. Um, typically, you're doing 12 to 13 credits every quarter, and that's broken up in, um, again, labs, lectures, and studios. Um, in addition, there are some extracurricular things that we do in the, in the first quarter. We do a lot of additional makerspace training. Our goal is that every student leaves fall quarter having learned or been exposed to all of the equipment that we have upstairs, which you will see on your tour. But again, five quarters, so you start in the autumn, your final quarter comes back in the autumn, and you complete the program, this program in December. So really quickly, the dual degree, this is um, an extension. It, it involves an additional six-month semester of study in Tsinghua University. Um, there's a little bit of a break because they have a holiday, so you would complete the MSTI in December and then um, initiate the six months in Beijing in February. Um, what's important to note about this, um, this is a really amazing opportunity to get a dual degree. And what that means is you are getting two master's degrees from these two world-renowned institutions. So your MSTI from UW and a MedSIT, a Master of Engineering, Data Science and Information Technology from Tsinghua University. But it is quite a bit of work. Um, I think Annie can attest to that um, because students are required to in addition to the course of study here in the msti um, initiate propose and complete a research thesis and so i'll show you how the timing works out but it, it definitely is an undertaking and something that people should really consider seriously um, again an incredible experience to within two years to be able to complete both a commercially sponsored launch project and a research thesis and come out with two master's degrees Um, and also just to note that instruction in both degrees is in English. Um, when we talk about admissions, we'll talk about TOEFL scores. Um, but the nature of the program and how students are interacting is they're spending a lot of time together in team meetings and talking about project concepts and moving quickly and doing a lot of writing and presenting. And so that's something that where we're really expecting students to be able to communicate effectively within groups and commun communicate their ideas effectively with faculty. And so that's something we put a strong emphasis on. So just really quickly how the two, how the dual degree timeline works. These would be the five quarters of the MSTI. During your spring quarter of the MSTI, um, you would have to propose your thesis topic and then you would be able to continue research on that in that February after completing the MSTI, you would then go to Tsinghua University and um, you would have elective coursework you could take and then be completing that research thesis. Um, so typically what happens is for students that sign up for the dual degree, they actually go to an orientation at Tsinghua first and there's where they learn all about Tsinghua University and they are matched with a faculty advisor and a thesis topic, which um, doctor, you can talk a little bit about, um, but that's typically the process. So you, you would be matched with an advisor, both on the UW and the Xinhua side and, you know, have some coaching and guidance around a topic. Would you like to say anything else about the research thesis or about some of the topics? Great. Okay. Uh, uh, actually, you have uh, said much I want to say now. So uh, I want uh, just a bit more about the, the, the research thesis. So, uh, so actually, the, so in the final uh, six months in, in Beijing, in, in Tsinghua, you can, you can, but before that, you, you first uh, match with your supervisor, your mentor in Tsinghua. So you already fix a topic uh, before you arrive in Beijing and uh, already working on that. So when you going back to go, go to Tsinghua, so you will start working on this and finally complete the, the thesis as required. Mm -hmm. uh, the topic, I think you may concern about this, uh, you can choose any topic. I think it's a, it's a wide range that's related to information, uh, information, information technology. So including the data, uh, big data and AI or uh, internet of things, or, or even human robot in, interaction and the human uh, uh, human computer interaction. So there's a range of 
topics you can choose. And also uh, the research, or, 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 or although we call it a research paper, is actually about the application research. So we do not expect the student to do real theoretic, uh, theoretical research. So uh, the purpose is for them to apply the technology into the into products or into uh, the practice. So this is the uh, basic idea. So if you have more questions, I'm, I'm uh, like to take, take okay. By, by one? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we do the admissions process together. Um, you are required to apply to both universities and um, we typically would make a group decision. So it's probably unlikely that you would be admitted by one and not the other. Um, but theoretically, let's say UW admitted you to the MSTI, but Xinhua did not, not admit you to the dual degree. You could still come and complete the MSTI. And my assumption would be that if you did not get admitted to UW, that you could still go and complete a, a full MedSit degree at Xinhua. So the MedSit, um, there is an existing uh, master's degree through Xinhua called the MedSit. And the, the dual degree is actually a version of that. So, so my understanding is it, that, that would be the actual degree, but the range of topics that you can explore is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the, I think the, range, the, the topic range is quite, quite wide. You can choose a lot of topics. So, but it's, it's, it had to be related to the information technology. You can even choose how to use some technology into an uh, application and then start that application, which means that maybe you do not need to write any code, but it's uh, up to you, up to the, 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 the project you choose. Yeah, I would say there's actually a very broad range of thesis topics with the current cohorts. Other question? Okay, we'll, we'll move on and try to wrap up so we can take more questions. So one of the questions was career outlook. What do we expect? What do we think that these students will graduate and do both in the near term and in a few years? Um, so we have not graduated anybody yet, um, but this is based on the, the past that we see students taking related degrees here at UW take or students from Xinhua take, um, and in particular from other interdisciplinary degrees that we have at UW. Um, so we see, uh, the other point that I will make is the curriculum design was actually heavily informed by feedback we got from industry saying, in particular Microsoft saying, we are looking for these characteristics and this type of knowledge and experience in our future workforce. And we are going to have a huge growing demand and need for these type of workers. And we want you to help us prepare that. So that was a heavy, heavy influence in the vision of GIX and the curriculum in particular, which leads us to believe that these are the career outcomes we think people will have. So leadership path at an established technology company, of course, the usual suspects locally and regionally, but really globally, we expect our students to be candidates for those because they will have a broader, more sophisticated perspective informed by a multicultural experience, but also because they will really have an end-to-end -end understanding. They will, they will understand not just a deep technical skill, but the breadth of how to engage a team, different aspects of the end-to-end -end process, how to propose and present something and get funding or get uh, momentum either in an in, inside a company or as a startup. So those are all things that we expect people to walk away with that will potentially accelerate them in a leadership path in a company. Um, potentially a CTO or a CEO or a CXO for a startup company, um, so, but somebody that is helping to lead the development of that organization or the business or product idea. Um, they, the, some of our students have already talked about going and starting up a business around either their launch project or some other project that they initiated here while they were here at GIX. Um, I know that several of the first uh, cohort of dual degree students already have startups and patents, so that's pretty exciting. Um, 
And then there's another category that's really emerged is this notion of technology strategy consulting firms. These are firms that might get called into an existing company or maybe even a retail environment to say, help us transform to a more digital footprint, help us update our business processes or the way we engage customers, give us a digital strategy. And so IBM, Deloitte, many other companies are developing these consulting arms that will go out and help companies transform themselves. So we're getting close to the end. Um, admissions requirements. We have all the details on our website and I don't want to uh, go into all that information overload. So it's more useful. I find that what students are more curious about is what really makes me a fit? How can I position myself as a good fit for MSTI? What characteristics are you looking for? Um, and so this first sentence is really the critical one. What we're really looking for is students who are curious, curious about the world around them, how things work, how they're built, both software and hardware, why things are designed the way they are. They can see a systemic view on the world. Um, they have some track record um, through their previous education or hobbies or things like that as risk takers, problem solvers, makers. People who like to tinker, we often hear people say, I'm a gadget person, I really am curious about gadgets and how they work, right? And so being able to demonstrate that you have those characteristics or you have that history, um, but with a baseline of technical skill. So the baseline of technical skill is important. Um, at least two computing courses or evidence of software programming abilities, some college level math, that's important because um, we have technology development courses, hardware, software lab, sensors and circuits. These courses do contain or require some programming skill, some ability with math, and we have found that students who come in who don't have that really struggle. So if this is something that you don't already have in your background, Leah would be happy to point you to some resources. There are many, many um, opportunities, online courses, free courses, things that you can do to kind of brush up on those skills if you don't already have that. Um, our application deadline is typically mid-January, so January 21st. Um, and there are many more details on our website, but we'd be happy to take questions about application or admissions. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Amit and Annie. I don't know if you want to just come up one at a time. And, and um, it would be great if you could just talk about what were you doing before? Why did you choose GIX? Maybe a couple of highlights of your experience here so far. Thank you. So uh, my name is Amit Anand, uh, and I'm from India. Uh, I did my undergrad in information technology, and then I worked there for two years. Firstly, I joined as a trainer, and then I worked for Microsoft uh, Windows and Office customer representative team via Converges. Uh, then I joined MSTI, and my main motive to join MSTI was uh, I didn't want to limit myself towards a particular course or towards a particular field. Apart from technology, I wanted to learn business ethics as well. Uh, fabrication, prototyping, corporate and IP law, IP law. And I'm very happy that I have gained those skills already. Uh, apart from that, talking about the launch project that we are working on. So the last two quarters, they are dedicated towards the launch project. For the six months, we work, for, we work with our consortium companies. So I'm working with T-Mobile and uh, so we have signed non-disclosure agreements, so I can't talk a lot about it, but just the overview is, uh, so we are working and we are developing uh, an AR app that will leverage and showcase the power of 5G. And the 5G is uh, still to come, like hasn't, it's gonna launch in 2020. Uh, apart from that, I'm also interning as a technical product manager in a startup that's based in Kirkland. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, apart from that, apart from studies and work, I'm a national cricket player. So I've represented my country and under 19. Thank you.
So hi everyone, I'm Annie and I'm from China. So before joining GX, I'm an undergraduate student in Tsinghua University and I double majored in mechanical engineering and business administration. So during my undergrad, I did, uh, I had three years of research uh, experience in the, in the robotics hand. So um, in that experience, I applied for several patents and they were actually applied to the manufacturers. And I, 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 I really like that feeling that I can use my kind of technology to make a real impact. So at that time, GIX um, exists and then I feel it's a quite kind of suitable program for me because it's, it's also um, brings in the both insights from industry and academia to make real impact and solve the real world uh, problems. And in GX, I really, um, I really like those interdisciplinary training. Even though I have my uh, degree both in mechanical engineering and business before, but here I still have the chance to learn more about like the IP law and also the uh, Agile management, uh, which is more suitable for the future career of like project management or product management. And also I'm very interested in the technology uh, consulting. So I think it's also a really great uh, program to prepare for, uh, for you to enter those kind of companies. And for the launch project I'm doing right now, it's uh, sponsored by a company in China. It's doing an ERP software uh, in China, which is specialized in the fashion industry. And uh, when they came, they came with a problem that how can we um, upgrade their uh, system right now or how can they upgrade the fashion industry in China right now? So it's kind of a very unstructured problem. So my teammates and I, we kind of investigated on the different points on the supply chain, um, including the manufacturer side, the distributors, and also the retail stores. And before we end up with the project that we are doing right now, it's about the data science doing the sales forecasting for the, uh, for the clothing. And we actually, we did some smaller, smaller projects on the manufacturer side, like to automate their piecework, the process of piecework. And also uh, we applied the IoT, the RFID technology to the retail stores. We, uh, we can use those kind of IoT technology to monitor the popularity or the sales of the clothing in the stores. And that's uh, most of my experience. Thanks. Um, so I, I think the startups that I'm aware of thus far started back at, uh, in Xinhua, some of your, Annie's peers, um, and I don't, I believe there was some support for that in terms of filing patents. Um, did you, do you want to talk about that? Do you know anything about that? <laughs> yeah, we get help from filing those patents and also the copy, software copyrights, and they have some institutions and also faculties to help you to uh, do those kind of procedure to go through that procedures, and also they have some guidance on how to uh, how to set up a startup in China. Also, so right. Yes. So I think. Yes. Yeah, so so. Um, in terms of both universities, one core um, opportunity is just to connect students and teams to external sponsorship resources, opportunities to move forward with their projects. Um, one of the things that I will say is because we are in our first cohort, there's a number of questions and opportunities that arise in this first run through that we're still working on. Um, this question has come up, if there are launch teams that get traction and really want to be able to move forward, are there resources and incubation opportunities that we might be able to provide? And that's still in discussion. I think we're still trying to figure out what makes sense, what might be the needs, how can we help students take those projects and pursue them beyond their time at GIX. So stay tuned on that one.
Okay. Happy to take that question. So I'm the only mechanical engineering student uh, in GIX uh, who, who graduated from this degree in GIX. And uh, I found it very useful when you are doing the prototyping classes in GIX, because there's a course that in, uh, in the spring quarter that we, we need to form into a group of three to four people to do a kind of physical prototyping class. And also you have uh, you can you can get to help others on those on on your own skills, and also you can learn from other industrial and uh, designers to improve on your mechanical engineering skills. And also, one of the reasons that I want to join GX is that I think I need to learn more about the software engineering. So I uh, I get another chance to learn more about those uh, front end coding or back end or machine learning. Yeah. I would just add that we have two um, successive hardware software labs and those courses are explicitly meant to have students be prototyping and building and making both in hardware and software and learning how to connect and how to make the physical form interactive three-dimensional hardware form and also to develop its behavior through software. So, so we do really try to connect the hardware and the software in this program and build that into the curriculum. Other questions? Um, just really quickly, I want to note um, who to contact if you have questions for admissions or other things about the program for both Xinhua and University of Washington. Um, and before we move just full on to more informal Q&A, um, definitely please keep in touch with us. And, and there's lots of activities going on here. And so we try to keep a steady stream of social media. Um, if you want to see what we're up to on a regular basis, follow us or like us. And um, yeah, hopefully you'll get to see continuing adventures. So we have a brand new cohort starting next week. They're showing up on Wednesday for orientation. And so we will have for the first time, two overlapping cohorts in the building working together. One group that's finishing up their launch project and graduating in December, and the other group that's just beginning their journey here with us. So it's going to be a very exciting time. So with that, we'll open up to more informal questions for any of us that we've introduced. Um, in particular, for those of you online, if you have questions you'd like to get answered before we wrap up, it would be great to hear those. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great question. So the question is within the cohort that we currently have, um, or even the incoming cohort, I, is there anybody who doesn't have some sort of a background in software or hardware engineering? Is that who, who doesn't already have study or experience or practice? A little bit about our cohorts. We intentionally recruit people with a diverse background and skill set. And yet we have this balance that we have to strike that they have some minimum set of technical skills so we know they can succeed in the program and the coursework. Um, we do find applicants who might have majored in business or economics or design or some other field, but they have been um, self-interested in technology, so they've taught themselves programming on the side, or maybe they've taken a couple computer science courses. And certainly there are people who come through the program but do not expect to be writing code for a living when they leave this program. Some of them want to be program managers or project managers or even uh, user experience designers. So what I would say is you want to make sure that you have the baseline knowledge and skill and understanding of how software is developed, how it's built, some hands-on experience. Um, as long as you have that and some ability in math, you should be fine in the program. And we certainly don't want to limit it so that we are only admitting people with an engineering background. We really do want to embrace multiple skill sets and different perspectives because those teams are what make the most interesting projects. Yeah. Mm-hmm.
Right. It is very sensitive you and we've learned a lot in this first year. We did, to be fully honest, we admitted some people who weren't fully prepared and they struggled. And I think we all learned a lot from that. Um, often you are in a team and, you know, in most cases, everyone is willing to help people along and mentor people who might be a little bit behind on certain topics. Um, we also have done um, something where we buy lynda.com memberships for everybody. So we try to support students in their ability to kind of on their own and on the side, self-directed, pick up some of the skills that they feel like they might need. Um, but we're still learning on how best to strike that balance. Um, but given your description of your background, you know, you have a science background and um, urban planning really is creative problem solving. So I would encourage you to apply and to consider whether you wanna brush up on the self-taught computer skills in the meantime. Yeah. We, we have implemented an assessment for anyone for whom it's not obvious what they're, that they meet the prerequisites. Yeah. So, and also, a major component of the program is block projects. There's no expectation that everybody right. So, you know, people approaching in the course of prior schools and leading up to it, everyone has to do well. But when the block happens, you have to keep it. Sorry. Sure. Uh, my two points, and I can do it faster. Uh, the, my two points are that there's an assessment tool that we have if, if you're on the borderline of whether or not you have the strong enough programming skills. And the second thing is that in the, in the launch team, which is a major component of the program, it's not expected that everyone masters every piece of the technology in the launch project to the same level. So we expect that there's a mix of people contributing in different ways to the launch project success. Well said, thanks. Other questions, yes. Um, well, at a minimum, again, we expect everyone to go through the courses and, you know, meet the learning objectives and get exposed to different things. To Blake's point, within the context of a particular project, you might focus your role more heavily on one or the other, but you would need to be exposed to both and complete group projects and team projects that have challenges in both areas. Um, yes, so um, graduate education is expensive in the United States um, and GIX is no different. Um, we, because of our uh, industry sponsorships, we actually enjoy the ability to offer significant scholarship support. Um, typically that is awarded on a merit basis and all applicants are considered for that. Um, I don't know if you would add anything to that, Leah, about other opportunities for financial aid. So once you're admitted and are looking for funding, um, UW helps admitted students find different scholarships and um, grants, but I would say it's more useful to look at those beforehand. So we have one Fulbright Scholar who has a full ride in our program this year, and there's a lot of other opportunities, because um, sometimes if you wait until after you're admitted, a lot of those are already taken. Um, you can also apply for financial aid, um, if that's an option for you. And then the last thing I'll say is that, um, this is a full-time intensive program. Uh, most students find that they have to work really hard at time management and they don't have a lot of free time. Um, however, some students are able to hold part-time jobs. 
And we do hire students here at GIX to do various things for us. We hire people to be assistants in our makerspace. Um, we have hired people to do other either temporary jobs or um, social media or other types of things. So we typically do have some of those opportunities as well. Did you have one? Okay. I would say yes, Blake, would you agree? A general engineering undergraduate? Um, yeah, I would say it never hurts to brush up on your computer programming skills or knowledge. I know um, there's a lot of work in Python and also JavaScript, right? But um, if you wanted to get very focused, but yeah, I think that would be a great background. We also encourage applicants who have graduated and have work experience. In general, our cohort is a mix of people coming straight from undergrad. And um, thank you, Blake, and uh, people who have a few years of work experience. Often it's people who have gone down a certain path professionally like Amit and have decided that they want their opportunities to be much more rich and broad. And so they want to come back and get a new perspective. You said you had a couple questions. Great question. Um, certainly that is also an alternative. Um, I would, there's a couple of things I would say. One is, do you know, pardon? Oh, sorry. So the question was, why not just go work for a startup if the outcome is that you should be prepared to be an entrepreneur and launch your own startup? Why couldn't I just go get that experience and get paid for it, right? Um, a couple of reasons. One is, do you, does anybody know what the success rate of startups is, startup companies? It's in the single digits, right? Um, so hopefully if you do that, you pick the right startup, right? Because potentially what you could learn is a lot of bad practices and bad behavior and ultimately not succeed. And there are all kinds of uh, blog posts about bad experiences people have had. I'm not saying that to diminish startups. I think they're great. Um, the challenge is if you work for a particular startup, you're gonna learn exactly what that startup is about and that technology and that market. And really, I guess what I would say is what we want to, ha want to happen here is that your skill set is broadly applicable to a range of different professional opportunities. And I would envision you going out and being what I would call a serial entrepreneur, right? Not just a one hit wonder. Um, so I think you'd be more likely to have those types of lifelong opportunities if you have a broader, uh, more rigorous exposure to what you're trying to learn. I think also most startups, um, they're going to ask you to wear a lot of hats. And I've, I've uh, worked with a lot of students who lead a, a graduate program like this and then go out into the world and get a job. And many of them say, I would like to work for a startup. It seems like a great opportunity. But one of the things I often tell them is, okay, well, that means that you're going to go in there and you're willing to be the expert on what that startup is asking you to do versus saying, I've learned this, I've practiced it, but I have so much more to learn. And I want to go to a company where there's someone who can mentor me, who's more expert than me in this particular topic. And so knowing yourself and knowing whether you think, you know, you have enough expertise that you can immediately hit the ground running and be the expert in a very small team and wear a lot of hats, or whether you really feel like you'd actually like to develop some skills in a, and practice those in a safe environment before you put yourself out there to do that. So that's another consideration. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> that is a very good question. Um, I think it takes a few years to get accreditation, and I think we are not yet at that stage, but, but accredited through, um, actually, you know what, I don't know, I have to say. Um, can we get the email and follow up on that? 
I, I think we are um, UW and the UW Graduate School is accredited, but we are a brand new program. So I don't believe that we would have gone through that process yet. We have a two year academic review. Um, and the, um, the way that we went through the process to develop this degree was that we made a proposal to the Board of Regents on the curriculum and the degree. We did competitive research. It was approved by a multidisciplinary external board. It was approved by the Board of Regents. We got input from other universities. So we've gone through the standard processes, but I believe that's a time-based um, thing. Great question. So one of the things that we learned from the first year through is that we had this incredibly scripted, curated, sequential degree program, but because we recruit interdisciplinary people, sometimes we find someone shows up and they already know a topic that we're teaching. And there was a desire to say, well, I already know finance and accounting. I covered that in my undergraduate degree. Do I have to take it again? And so we, we starting this year, we wanted to introduce the opportunity for people to opt out of a course that they might already know and swap that and take, take a different course on main campus. So that is a flexibility that we've introduced just this coming year. Yeah. It, depending on which degree you're in, it's either four or eight. So typically what we would suggest with students is that when they come in, take a look at the entire list of courses in the sequence, meet with Leah, determine which courses you think you might wanna do that because you would have to provide some demonstration, either a transcript or something to demonstrate that you already have that knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have a testing out per se. Again, you would have to choose which ones you feel like you would like to swap or exchange and you'd have to show us, here's my transcript or here's some demonstration, a portfolio, some way to demonstrate that you already have that knowledge. In part because our goal is that by the time everyone gets to their launch project, everybody's been, had some exposure to the same topics and speaks the same language, right? So um, you would have the opportunity to say, hey, this course is introductory. Um, I'd like to swap it out because I already took that you know, in some other capacity, or here's demonstration that I have that knowledge. Um, the other thing to think about, though, is within an individual class, specifically the project-based classes, so for example, hardware and software lab, um, you have the opportunity on a project basis to define a project that is more challenging. And that certainly was the case with this cohort. You know, you, we try to group people together so that if there's a group of people who are more advanced, they can they can form a team together and they can take their project a little further. So that's another option. Is there a question or sort of general question about the, the role of the desk in the uh, uh, staying overnight here just to <laughs> uh, develop the prototyping stuff? So and second quarter, uh, I was working on uh, a smart system that I have to prototype. So we can't purchase it from outside. We have to build it here upstairs. So I spent like more than 50 hours consecutively, like seven to eight days overnight here just to develop that particular prototype. And it's just because the silly mistakes I did. And because you have to, uh, ask, so we use softwares like Fusion 360 or Rhino and even a single, 0.1 millimeter of up and down can destroy the complete prototype. So it took me for 50, more than 50 hours and six, seven days work overnight. And so that's my best memory here. <laughs> yeah, last day. How many people on your team? Uh, three, three, yeah. Were you all here overnight? No. So prototyping was my part. So <laughs> I took that stuff, so I stayed overnight. <laughs> Well, I'm actually pleased to hear that that was your highlight. <laughs> um, but I'm also guessing that if you were to go build that prototype tomorrow, you'd probably do it in far less time and you'd know all of the mistakes Maybe. to avoid. Maybe a day. That so that, that is really what we're trying to do, right? Is to be able to have you have that 
um, iterative experience, make those mistakes, learn, and then come out. And to be able to say that in an interview, I think would be very powerful. So. So I think my most valuable experience is to um, to have the experience of different kind of most advanced technologies, like uh, in autonomous driving and in robotics and in AI, data science, and also the IoT, except the Bitcoin. <laughs> So, so I think um, for for other master programs, you don't usually have the chance to explore so many different areas. But in this program, you have much freedom to explore yourself. So the question was, I'm trying to get that bright light out of our faces. <laughs> um, are international students encouraged to apply? Is the question we love international students. We're pretty much all international students. In fact, um, our current cohort represents 11 different countries and um, US students is not the majority. So yeah, we, we welcome students from anywhere to apply. Uh, it's both. So the master's degree, that 15 months master's degree is intentionally short. It's my perception. Okay. So uh, it's not short, uh, but there's a lot of stuff to learn. Maybe if you want to learn a lot, then 15 months is not 15 months, even two years is less for master's, right? Uh, so I think for me, it's good. Uh, and the more time you spend, and so it's better and it's good to learn the same stuff in 15 months rather than to invest two years for the same stuff. And even I think I'm learning more than that. I hope that answers your question. Okay. One comment I will make is that a traditional two-year master's degree does afford you the opportunity to do a summer internship. Um, Amit mentioned that he did an internship, but I, my bet is he would say it's a lot of hard work and it's not for everyone. But we, we, instead of an internship, we offer a launch project that is working in concert with industry. But that is definitely something to think about as the trade-off that we make when we condense the program into five quarters. Okay. So usually um, a master in Tsinghua is about like three years. And then, but now you can have, so, so my, my cohort is it's kind of um, it's, uh, special because we reverse the two, uh, two education program. So, uh, so I spent like two and a half years totally in this program. And I think it's just right for you to um, get both the exposure to technology and business and also the, some start or entrepreneurship experience. And also it's uh, kind, of a, kind of quite a good fit for you to also explore um, many kind of um, other uh, other stuff of yourself. Yeah. So the question is whether or not um, prospective students could reach out and get in touch with current GIX students with questions. Um, absolutely, I would contact Leah and let her know what you're interested in. We. Um, often call on our current students to answer questions and we just want to make sure that we don't bombard them. So we'd be happy to put you in touch. Um, I'm definitely a fan of the best way to find out if this is a fit for you is to talk to somebody who's currently doing it. Yes, actually, one of our projects is sponsored by that team. So we have two Microsoft projects. Um, the AI for Earth, they are looking at um, a system where, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, uh, what's called a camera trap. This would be a camera that's positioned out in the wilderness somewhere, maybe tied to a tree, and um, it would capture wildlife images. Um, so hunters have used these for years, but now we're looking at them for conservation and biodiversity. So uh, they're working with a team at Microsoft to develop 
both the specific hardware and software for machine learning on the edge, meaning I, as a home consumer, can have this kit, this uh, IoT for Earth kit. I put it up in my backyard, and then I get data-driven um, understanding of what wildlife is coming through my property or in my surrounding area, right? So it's image recognition and identification, which I think is fantastic because I have owls and coyotes and all kinds of crazy animals going through my yard. So that's the project that they're working on. Um, and they're really, and the team is also looking at exploring how that business model and value proposition could be expanded to other things like actual fish and wildlife conservation work and things like that. Yeah, it's a fun project. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question is, um, uh, do, do I uh, know the goal that I want out of the program before or after, right? So, so before the program, I think my goal is to doing some entrepreneurship to do a startup and also to, or, or to apply some technology into the real industries. But right now as I'm uh, actually in the period of like um, seeking jobs right now, preparing ourselves for interviews. So it's also a good time to reflect back on your past experience. And, uh, and throughout this kind of whole experience in GIX, I found out that we are more kind of, uh, you can still do startup, but I think it needs a quite a good team or uh, the right time to really start out right after the graduation. But uh, you can still have the opportunity to, uh, to do the project man management and also the, like I said before, the technology consulting. Yeah. So uh, my goal wasn't clear. I switched two jobs and I was into sports a lot. Uh, so I joined GIX and my goal is clear now. I, wanted to, I want to be a product manager. Uh, it's not because it's a fancy job. It's because the skills that I gained here. Product manager is not limited to a particular field. You have to manage a lot of stuff, multiple teams. You have to talk with multiple teams like designers. You have to talk with developers. You have to talk with sometimes CEOs. So I, I, I'm working in a startups. So I have been to CEO office to talk some something about it. Uh, I've talked with uh, the developers. I've kept the meeting. So now I... I do know what skills is required to be a product manager. And that's what my goal is for now. And that's what I'm pursuing now. Thanks. So um, our applications run through the University of Washington Graduate School and uh, they actually define that fee. Um, I think we would likely have to petition. I don't know that we've done it in the past, but uh, it would be a bit unusual. So that's something I would say you should probably contact us via email and um, explain the request. Any other last questions? Yes. Oh, it's a great question. Um, so we, although we do have research agreements with some of the companies that some aspects of these projects are confidential, we do plan to have a public presentation. And I believe that's currently scheduled for December 7th in the afternoon. Stay tuned and we will post that and let people know what that process looks like. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I believe we're gonna do a quick tour um, thank you so much for your time and your great questions. It's super helpful for us to know what questions you have. And please keep in touch and reach out to us if you'd like to meet more students or if you have any other questions. Thank you. And thanks to everyone online. <laughs>